I got a weird feeling about the New York Jets going into this year. And ever since they traded for Aaron Rodgers last offseason, this just to me felt like one of those situations that feels too good to be true. You want Aaron Rodgers to end his career going out on top. But this to me has all the makings of a scenario where it ends up ending in really ugly fashion. And I like Aaron Rodgers. He's one of my favorite players all time. He's the last OG quarterback of my generation or of the era that I grew up watching football as a kid. But with him missing mandatory minicamp to go do ayahuasca, that just doesn't set right with me. And you can say that, well, he was at OTAs. It, that's not the point. You shouldn't be missing any opportunity to get reps in with your teammates if you're Aaron Rodgers coming off a Achilles injury where you only played for three snaps during the regular season. You still don't know if you got good timing and good rapport with Garrett Wilson, plus you got Mike Williams coming in who's been injured for two years in a row, you got a new offensive line, Aaron Rodgers is not in a situation where he can afford the miss practice time. The excuse of, well, he's Aaron Rodgers, if he wants to miss time, he can miss time, doesn't fly with me. When there's so much riding on this dude, if he's not good, Everybody is asked out. Robert Sala gets fired. Joe Douglas gets fired. And the New York Jets are right back in the drawing board when it comes to starting over again at quarterback and with the new head coach. If I'm Robert Sala, I would tell this dude, hey, man, we need you to be at every practice. Go do ayahuasca during your off time. Mandatory minicamp is only three, four days. You mean to tell me you couldn't put... That on hold, you had to go get high? I want to believe that the New York Jets are going to succeed this year. And I'm, and I'm not saying that they're going to be a bad team. What I'm saying is that I'm having a hard time trusting the Jets to live up to the level of expectations that most of us have for them with Aaron Rodgers healthy. They got a really tough schedule. This thing could go left. After the first month of the season, you got to play San Francisco week one. Depending on how your first four or five games though go is determining how the rest of your season goes. Because let's say the New York Jets start off four and one, three and two. Everything's cool. But you also could start out one and four. And then the morale in the locker room starts to sour. And then people start to be looking at Aaron Rodgers sideways because you're one and four. He may not be playing that well. And then you go back to thinking of the instance where he missed mandatory minicamp to go do drugs. No player is under more pressure than what Aaron Rodgers is going into this season, man. He has to produce. And I'm going to say it one last time. I'm not rooting for the Jets to be terrible. I'm not hating. This is coming from somebody who is concerned with everything that the New York Jets have allowed Aaron Rodgers to do. He is running this team. Honestly, he's pretty much saying whatever to appease the owner. Joe Douglas and Robert Sala are the biggest Aaron Rodgers cheerleaders in the world because they're permitting this guy to not only assemble the team, but to miss practice whenever he wants to, this just doesn't look like a locker room that is completely balled in, where it's one team, one goal. You got a good amount of players that are balled in, but is Aaron Rodgers truly balled in if he's allowed to do his own thing and he's given special treatment as compared to the rest of the players on the roster? And not just Aaron Rodgers, but you trade for Hassan Reddick, Instead of keeping Bryce Huff, who was younger and had a lot of upside, he was coming off a breakout season last year, and the deal that he signed with Philadelphia, you easily could have matched. But instead, you end up saying, you know what, we're just going to trade Huff for Hassan Reddick, who has a way larger cap hit and also is way older than Bryce Huff. And then you know that he's seeking a new deal, and he has yet to talk to anybody in your organization, he's yet to show up to any 
mini camp, any organized team activity. The New York Jets just seem to do a lot of things out of desperation. And oftentimes it ends up failing miserably. This team has been a clown show for the past decade. The last time the Jets were good was when Rex Ryan was the head coach in the early stages of the 2010s. I I just have a hard time believing in Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets this year. I don't think it's going to have the fairy tale ending that Jets fans are hoping for. I think this thing is either going to end with the New York Jets making it to the playoffs. They fight hard in the wild card round, but they end up going home with the L. Or they end up just missing the playoffs altogether and they go 8-9 and nine, or even miss it at 9-8. and eight. There's just a lot of reasons to be skeptical about the New York Jets than it is to be confident about them. And they do have one of the more better rosters in the NFL. I don't think they got a top 10 roster. Their offensive line still is a concern. I don't think their wide receiving core is that good. I think they got a top 15 roster. They got a good enough roster that if Aaron Rodgers plays at an MVP level like the way he did with the Green Bay Packers, they definitely could make a run and win it all. But this roster is heavily overrated. Mike Williams is injury prone. Teron Smith hasn't played a full season since 2015. That's nearly a decade. I was in middle school the last time Teron Smith played every game in the regular season. Listen, I just am having a hard time trusting the Jets to play up to expectations this year. Does this not feel a little bit weird to y'all? Aaron Rodgers is missing mandatory minicamp to go do drugs. Robert Sala and Joe Douglas are trying to make it seem like it's not a big deal when it really is a big deal because he didn't play at all last year pretty much. He only played a few downs in the preseason and only three snaps during the regular season. He still needs to continue to to develop good timing and chemistry with these wide receivers, something that we haven't seen it's going to translate on the field yet. I, I just don't know about the New York Jets, man. I'm really skeptical about them going into the 2024 NFL season. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Shout out to K. Roan. He says, I don't know why people expect it to be different when the Jets offseason looks just like last year. I agree. Shout out to my dude, College Football with Sam. He says, hey, JT, I don't know much about the NFL, but from what I understand, the Jets are probably going to undergo regime change unless they make the playoffs. Am I wrong? No, my friend, you're absolutely correct. That's why they went out there and they begged for Aaron Rodgers to want to come play for them. That's why Aaron Rodgers has so much power within this organization. But if this season starts off left, And they go 1-4, 2-4. The goodwill that Aaron Rodgers has built with this franchise is quickly going to evaporate. And this thing can go south really fast.